Who are the top third base prospects entering 2024? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, November 16th. I am Frank Sanfield, joined by Chris the Welsh. Let's break down the top five third base prospects entering 2024. And of course, this list comes according to the Welsh. Number one is Junior Caminero of the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm just going to run through the names and then we'll talk about each one. Uh, Noel V. Marte with the Reds, Colt Keith with the Tigers, Kobe Mayo with the Orioles, and Brady House with the Nationals. The top two on this list, Welsh, we have Caminero with Tampa Bay. Good chance he's up on opening day. We saw him for like six, seven games at the end of the year. Uh, Noel V. Marte, he actually got 35 games in with the Reds, so I feel even better about that. What kind of contributions do you think those guys can make as soon as next year? Well, I think the Rays have to look at themselves and say, what could we do with 30 plus homers? Because that's what Junior Caminero did this year. He was the youngest to hit 30 plus homers in the minors. And this is a guy that is a short or a third baseman. They might have that shortstop position open. They've got a third base spot that's open. I think it's clearly there. I think the pick compensation has already built in this big story. We took a look on the main podcast at Steamer Projections, which projections are not telling the story that Caminero is going to start producing right out the way. I think they have 29 games projected to play. I don't believe it. He makes all the sense in the world to be out there. It's a big, huge power bat, makes lots of contact. He doesn't run a bunch, but I think this is one of those guys. We're seeing this trend happen more and more with these young hitters. Hey, they're hitting two. They're hitting three in primary spots. Evan Carter, Corbin Carroll. I think that's what the Rays could do with Junior Caminero. I think he is up on opening day and he produces. And though I don't feel as crazy like, hey, look at Junior Caminero as I do with Noelvi Marte. Noelvi Marte, this team has to consolidate some of their young players. Jonathan India looks like a uh, player that they might be moving on from. And then that would enable them to have this roster of Marte, Ellie, and Matt McClain. And Noelvi showed out, stole six bases in the majors, still has prospect qualifications, big EV numbers. And this is a shortstop that is playing third base. So it gives them a little bit more flexibility and maybe they might see as an upgrade defensively on what they had. So I think Noelvi Marte is another one of those players who will also qualify for the pick compensation if he were to win rookie of the year. That is something we do need to consider with our rookies and both junior and Noelvi. They got some major league time that I think continues at the start of the 2024 season. Again, the top uh, three, the number three, four, and five names on this list, we have Colt Keith of the Tigers, Kobe Mayo of the Orioles, and Brady House of the Nationals. The one thing that they all have in common, big power for each of them. I think Colt Keith might project to have the best batting average of that bunch, and he might project as the most likely to be up on opening day as well. Welsh, would you agree with that on Colt Keith? Yeah, everything we talked about with like Noel V and Junior Caminero, Scott White, myself, we're all like, Colt Keith, Colt Keith. And it just never happened last year. But maybe they're saving it right for the start of the year. He ended up having 27 homers. He hit over 300. In double A, he was hitting over 300 against both light, uh, righties and lefties. His defense, maybe a little bit of a struggle. Think he can play over at second or third. But they've got the position open. I don't think there's any real stop unless this team is – trying to do manipulation and arbitration and stuff like that. This is a team that should go for the extra pick compensation. This is a great bat, big power bat, middle of the order guy, no stolen bases out there. He would be a bet I would have over Kobe Mayo, even though everything Kobe Mayo is doing is putting him as a top 10 overall prospect. The power numbers are through the roof. There might be some righty split, uh, righty lefty split issues that exist in some of these big power hitters. But I mean, across the board, max EV to barrel percentage to slugging everything you do in the minors. Kobe Mayo is one of the youngest and most prolific power hitters out there. There's just no spot with the Orioles right now. That's the main problem. What are they going to do? The smart thing I would think is take some of those uh, prospects that you have, the Kerstads, the Westbergs, the Colton Cowsers, and maybe make a move so you have room for what is your future. That future is Gunnar Henderson, Jackson Holiday, and I think Kobe Mayo. But Colt Keith has a much better opportunity to make the majors than I believe Kobe Mayo does at a camp. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. I think the Orioles, they have to consolidate at some point. They're not going to be able to afford you know big contracts for all of these players either. So maybe trading off some of those prospects, 
Dylan Cease available, Tyler Glass now available, Corbin Burns maybe I think makes some sense as well. Uh, I don't think that they will be moving Kobe Mayo, but maybe some of those other pieces which will help him to eventually get in the lineup. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again on Saturday. Bye-bye. 